So let's begin from here because the MPP says on February 8, it will hit the streets in a demonstration that is expected to compare government to properly, that's according to the MPP, handle the power crisis. Now, the general secretary of the party, Kabana Ejei Japan, who made this known at the news conference, said the demonstration was also intended to pressurize government to address the current economic hardships. The demonstration, dubbed Wangbo, meaning we are dying, is to bring to government's attention the economic hardship in the country. At a press conference in Accra, General Secretary of the NPP, Kwabna Ejapon, said the NDC government has mismanaged economy, hence the demonstration. The erratic power supply the party maintained has crippled the economy, leaving many Ghanaians jobless. As a responsible political stakeholder, the MPP considers it a national duty to bring the deep suffering of the Ghanaian people and the intolerable state of affairs today to the attention of this government, which is obviously incompetent, insensitive and uncaring. We wish to state that we want to commence that struggle with a street protest next Wednesday, 18th of February, in Accra. We want to use this opportunity to call on all Ghanaians of different shades of opinion, including some of our own brothers and sisters in the NDC who are disgruntled and disappointed in the performance of their government. According to the NPP General Secretary, the party is set with security and other arrangements for the demonstration. The level of suffering right now has reached such proportions that it demands political action. For, from responsible actors, and none more so than the NPP. I think it's important that we offer the leadership to put the government on its toes. National women's organizer of NPP, Otiko Afisa Jaba, called on women to show up massively to register their protest. We want to cry to President Jomawa that Ibisawuma where they born him, his mother is like me. It's like that kinky seller, that hairdresser, his sister. It's like that chop bar owner, that fishmonger. We want to beg him. Also, on Tiobia, the mothers of this country, on Tiye. No, Sikana Ekoko Koko baby, no. Nayan Fanko saw the energy and ensure that we bring Ghana back to life. Well, the MPP talking about uh, bringing Ghana back to life. We saw the reaction with the uh, communications ministry. Deputy uh, Minister Felix uh, Kwachiofusu agreed to speak to us. And uh, he currently is not uh, picking up his phone. If you're around him, ask him to pick up. We want to speak to him on the NPP's allegations that government is simply not managing the energy crisis well. Mr. Felix Kwachiofusu, if you're around him, just get him to speak to us. Let's move on whilst we wait for him to get back to us. Now, talking about the Black Stars, government has announced a $25,000 bonus package for the Black Stars who won silver at AFCON 2015. President Mahama said the Black Stars are gradually beginning to win the confidence of the nation. GMPC had made a promise to reward you, you know, when you come back. And so GMPC has asked me to announce that they will give a reward of $25,000 <laughs> to each of you um, as a reward for the great uh, work that you've done. There are other corporate sponsors who have come forward. We are finalizing the rewards, but they look quite uh, promising and handsome to me. I won't reveal it. said that at a time that we had lost all hope in them, that's when they were going to prove to us that they are still the team to bet on. And um, I believe that the rest is history. I mean, they improved from March to March, and nobody can take anything away from the Black Stars. They came out the best team in the tournament. All of us are happy. I think that the confidence in our stars has been restored. You have redeemed yourselves in the eyes of Ghanaians. And I can assure you that the whole nation is behind you. We can see a great future for this team. 
Well, we get to you uh, some reaction uh, to that particular uh, issue there, 25,000 cities for the black stars. We'll also get you to speak to uh, that particular issue, 25,000 cities for the black stars. Uh, thousand dollars pardon me for the black stars that's a bonus and we're told that uh, more coming from corporate ghana the president said it looks quite handsome he won't simply uh, mention it we'll tell you more about that uh, if we are just uh, was asking if uh, the two players who missed the first five penalties will also be paid twenty five thousand dollars well perhaps uh, we need to ask uh, some more questions well we'll get the deputy communications minister we'll put these questions to him but let's come back to the npp because uh, the uh, they are asking government to as a matter of urgency break the trust deficit in its relationship with international partners the consequences they say could be uh, dire if government continues with the path it has been taken let's listen to them Minority members this time around focused on issues of foreign affairs. MP for Subin Isaac Osei, who read the statement, said the nation still awaits results of investigations of an incident in Tokyo, Japan, where some Ghanaians were arrested for operating an illegal casino. We know for a fact that Ambassador Agbenuche Day has been replaced by Ambassador Paka Aluti, who now has the unenviable task of restoring trust and repairing Ghana's damaged image in Japan. He said lots of questions still remained unanswered in the Ruby Nayele Ametepe cocaine issue. Isaac Osei indicated the trust deficits between government and international partners was indeed worrying and not good enough for development. Government and the NPA have been very opaque in their interface with the public on petroleum prices. For international observers, it is a matter of public trust that when rules are set and the game is being played, you simply do not change the rules because the game is not going your way. This is another trust deficit with the president and his team have to bridge. The group also touched on Nigeria's elections. You all recall the recent emergence of billboards of Nigerian political parties in Ghana. While these acts may not be illegal, I think that they should not be encouraged. They may, however, infringe the bylaws of MDAs. In any case, all politics is local. So Nigerian politics should be played out in Nigeria. Right, so let's get back to uh, the Black Stars. Uh, President Mahama has been talking about uh, some reward package for them. He later, earlier in the day, spoke about $25,000. Let me play you back that particular soundbite once more. GMPC had made a promise to reward you, you know, when you come back. And so GMPC has asked me to announce that they will give a reward of $25,000. To each of you, um, as a reward for the great uh, work that you've done, there are other corporate sponsors who have come forward. We are finalizing the rewards, but they look quite uh, promising and handsome to me. I won't reveal it. Said that at a time that we had lost all hope in them, that's when they were going to prove to us that they are still the team to bet on. And um, I believe that the rest is history. I mean, they improve from March to March, and nobody can take anything away from the Black Stars. They came out the best team in the tournament. All of us are happy. I think that the confidence in our stars has been restored. You have redeemed yourselves in the eyes of Ghanaians. And I can assure you that the whole nation is behind you. We can see a great future for this team. Well, the president said the whole nation is behind uh, the Black Stars, but we saw the arrival at the airport and the number of supporters who went there uh, to welcome them, in contrast to uh, how the elephants of La Côte d'Ivoire were welcomed there. 
Right, so let's try and make sense of uh, all these uh, $25,000 uh, dollars for the Black Stars, and particularly when the, the president said that the reward package isn't over yet because there is more. Sydney Kisley Hayford is joining me on phone. Uh, great to have you tonight. N now, uh, some concerns from viewers uh, just before we went on air was that uh, the country is in such economic difficulty that uh, $25,000, and that's it's not the end of it. There's more to come. It's simply too much, particularly when uh, the Black Stars players are being paid in dollars and not in Ghanaian cities. Uh, what is your first reaction to this? Um, I, I'm not sure um, how, how to express this, but mm. uh, yes, the country is in dire difficulty, um, and we are financially probably not in a position to be able to afford this. But I think the Black Stars played exceptionally well. Mm. Um, I, I think that they did, they, they did a, a human's job to qualify to where they were. And um, uh, they weren't beaten. They were just unlucky on the day mm. and couldn't get uh, the kind of goals that we thought. And we had to lose out by penalty. So um, mm. for the Black Stars, I think they did exceptionally well and made the country proud. Mm. I don't think there's anybody who will say that they didn't uh, function very well. Mm. Um, if we were going to give them just a $25,000 reward, it would be fine. Uh, but to say that there is more to come, I'm not sure whether the president thinks that their performance deserved more than $25,000 or whether he's just buying political votes by saying there is more to come. But then again, um, it's, it's another promise. And we know that um, this government and the president hardly keeps its promises. Uh, 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 Sydney, the information we we have which has not been uh, denied it's indicating that the black stars uh, players and about 65,000 cities in all the matches they played as bonuses and uh, appearance mm -hmm. fees and all that and so 25,000 cities plus 65,000 cities and yet more to come uh, th that's particularly the picture is it 65,000 cities or 65, dollars pardon me if i said cities 65,000 dollars uh, mm. made up of bonuses and appearance fees and all the money they earn mm. while I was in Equatorial Guinea, plus 25,000 mm. cities and, and more, $25,000 and more to come. Mm. Well, I, I don't think it is my place to speak for the players of the Black Stars, mm. uh, but I would have thought that knowing what they know about the position, the situation in which the country is in, I'm sure that if they, if they do not get any additional money, um, I, I don't think they will complain. In the past, uh, there were directives that uh, local transactions be made in the local currency, the CD. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the president talk about dollars. It's not been mm -hmm. denied. Uh, when they were traveling to uh, Equatorial Guinea, we also heard they were going to be paid $5,000. This mm -hmm. directive was by the central bank, and yet we keep hearing from uh, the uh, the policy makers about five thousand dollars, twenty-five thousand mm. dollars. Aren't we doing something wrong? Well, we certainly are. Um, we do have currency regulations in the country. Uh, we are not supposed to be dealing in dollars, as per the regulations of the central bank. Mm. Um, and I think in this case, it's entirely up to the president uh, to come to terms with what his uh, governor of the central bank uh, has laid down as rules for payments in foreign currency. Um, it, it is clearly a breach of the rules and regulations, and it's up to the uh, governor of the central bank uh, to warn him and to let him understand that he cannot be dishing out dollars in the economy because it's against the law. Um, whether the uh, central bank governor is capable of standing his ground and making such a statement, I doubt very much. Some have argued that uh, the president just mentioned $25,000 and that uh, the, the players will be paid in, in cities. Is that good enough, especially when the Bank of Ghana has directed that deal in the local currency? Well, if, if he's going to pay them the CD equivalent, uh, then yes, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you, can, you can do a conversion in the calculation in, in foreign currency, mm. either dollars, euros, uh, uh, British pounds or whatever, uh, but actually physically pay CDs. In that case, I doubt very much if he will be uh, out of the, uh, the, the law. He will still be within the law if he did that. Um, 
you know, look, we are, we are in a situation now where it's very, very difficult to know what the next steps are going to be. Uh, we are also focused on the power, er, erratic power supply mm. and how we are managing on a day-to-day basis. That somehow um, all of this just seems not to be as important like it used to be some time ago. I think that currently the problem we are facing again at, the, at this time of the year is the fact that the currency is beginning to depreciate and, and, and I'm, we don't want to take our eye off that ball. So um, maybe from, from, from this point on, we should really be back again looking at what is going wrong and why the uh, CD is beginning to depreciate against the dollar again and maybe a little too fast at this time when we thought we had some kind of stability. Uh, Sidney, can you uh, stay on the line for me? Let me ask my producer, uh, because I want us to uh, move this interview on to another level. Uh, the, uh, uh, the passing of the National Youth Employment Agency bill by Parliament. I asked my producer to play that story in Parliament, how the House managed uh, to pass that bill, particularly when there are issues with the bill. And then I'll come back to you briefly. So stay on the line for me. Let's uh, listen and see how Parliament uh, passed the National Youth Employment Agency Bill. The Youth Employment Agency, formerly National Youth Employment Program, GIDA, was government's attempt to address youth unemployment. Employment and Labor Relations Minister Haruna Idrisu said the bill would allow a review of previous contracts and ensure value for money. The bill, he added, would ensure the creation of 45 to 100,000 jobs for the youth, particularly under the sanitation, textile and poultry modules. Youth employment cuts across as a major national problem, if not a national uh, crisis, that uh, government demonstrates a commitment through the passage of this uh, law which is uh, providing the legal framework to govern youth employment, which has never been the case since it was initiated in 2005. The agency will receive funding from the communication tax, the district's assembly come of fund, among others. We do have about 100 million Ghana cities uh, accruing from the communication service tax that will be used to roll out two or three models. I've already directed that no person engaged under the youth employment should be paid below the minimum wage. So either to where they got 100 Ghana or 200 Ghana would be a thing of the past. The bill awaits presidential assent. Right, so, uh, Sydney Hayford is still on the line there. Uh, Sydney, grateful t- for you staying there. But uh, let's look at this particular bill passed by Parliament, the National Youth Employment Agency Bill. Now, before uh, there were attempts to pass the bill, and there were some reservations about it, and so uh, it had to be delayed. And uh, I'm sure not a whole house is happy about the passage of the bill, because according to them, there are uh, some uh, particular issues with the bill that has have to be dealt with. When you got to know the bill has uh, been passed, what was your first reaction? I'm very disappointed. I'm, I'm very, very disappointed that Parliament will go ahead and pass a bill on an issue which, as far as I'm concerned, is still at the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice to unravel. Mm. Um, I I, I don't know why we do these things, and I I can't understand why Parliament would think that they would bring back into play uh, an organization which has been so tainted with corruption. Um, It's it's a very, very difficult one to swallow, Uh, and I'm looking very carefully at what I personally should be doing because I do have a petition with Shrash to investigate uh, the JIDA scandal in a much different way. I filed a petition in November of 2013, and I still do not have any direct response uh, from the Commission as to what they are doing about the petition uh, and, and, and what stage they are at in investigations to identify the true culprits of all the corruption that we witness uh, uh, in the JIDA program. Mm. Uh, Sidney, some would argue that uh, the, the passage of the bill uh, gives uh, uh, the the, 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 the program, the needed uh, legal framework to operate on. But why then are you disappointed? Look, the National Youth Employment Program, when it was started uh, in the NPP government in the time, I think it was in 2006 or 2005, 
uh, first of all, wasn't necessary at all. And I've made that argument several times. The money that was voted uh, for that purpose could have been put into the National Vocational Training Institute and they could have been strengthened and made it better and strengthened them with a lot more technical capability and capacity. Mm. Uh, the NVTI was set up purposely to train the youth, to give them skills which they could use to start their own businesses and also to give them some kind of certification as to their capacity in vocational training. I argued against it. I didn't think it was necessary. And the expansion into the GDA program with all the unnecessary modules that were presented were totally out of context mm. and became a conduit for corruption in the country. And I can't understand why we are going back to perpetuating that very same program that we, we, we discovered as totally illegal and the culprits are still not yet been identified. Mm. It's a puzzle as to why we do things this way. This but, way. But, but I, Sydney, I, I'm, I'm, I'm totally Sydney if you say, I, I'm not cutting in rudely, but if you say the culprit have not been identified, I think uh, some of them, uh, we have uh, Abu Gapele, uh, the former sports minister, Humadu, and all of them uh, before court. So what exactly do you mean by the culprit uh, have not been identified? My petition uh, to the uh, Commissioner for Human Rights and Administrative Justice was that the service providers who actually created the memorandums of understanding, which were used to execute the programs, the, and, and in these uh, two areas, which were the Agams group, the Agambiri group, and the uh, Zumlan group, uh, J Jospon group, mm. are the principal culprits in the whole of the JIDA program. This was clearly identified in the president's own commission, which was set up, and which reported the basis for the investigation, which I filed a petition with, with the year uh, with Wishrash. These particular persons are yet to be charged, are yet to be made to refund monies which they took illegally, and are yet to account for the fraud that they perpetuated through the GIDA program. In my opinion, there are other persons as well which are yet to be identified, and we have not yet got to the bottom of it because the National Procurement Authority that was responsible for ensuring that most of these programs were not so sourced or were put out mm. for a competitive bid were not done that way. The persons at the, at the National Office of Finance the budget office, which was supposed to be responsible for ensuring that monies were not given out over and above the budget allocations, are also complicit in this matter. There are individuals at the Ministry of Youth who were also complicit in that matter. It is not only Abu Gapele and, and, and Asibit who are the persons who are responsible. And even those two, the trial is still going on, and we have no end in sight as to whether they will be prosecuted and indicted and jailed or not. Mm. So that, that investigation is still very open. And the longer it goes on, the more difficult it is going to be for us to prosecute the persons who are responsible for the fraud. So I say that at this stage, Shiraj has to go back and investigate the program again and ensure that the right culprits are brought to book. And mm. that is where I stand on the matter. That's the petition and the basis of which I filed that petition is because there are service providers who have not yet been actually identified. Mm. And they have caused financial loss to the state, state and they should be looked at. Let's talk about this conversation. Uh, the president is yet, or perhaps, uh, if I may be wrong, is yet to uh, assent the bill to become a law. Mm -hmm. Are there options? Uh, could the court of a land be persuaded to perhaps act and stop the bill becoming uh, a, a, a law? What are the options for us? I don't know yet. I am going to be talking to my lawyers in the morning and I will come to the, bo the, the bottom of whether or not uh, I can actually bring an action to stop the, the, uh, the bill becoming uh, an act of law. Um, if, if precedent serves me right, I doubt very much if I can do anything about it, because I am yet to witness any situation in this country where we've been able to stop a law from, from being given assent by the president when it is at this stage. However, I am not going to give up, and I am sure that my compatriots in Occupy Ghana will be with me on this one. And we will look at it very, very closely and see whether there's any remedy we can ask the court to bring to bear in order to be able to ensure that the citizens of this country are not again raped in this particular issue of corruption. 
Grateful to have you speak to us. Sydney Kisley for this financial analyst there. Talking to me about uh, first the Black Stars uh, bonus and then uh, the National Youth Employment Agency bill passed by Parliament. That's how we're wrapping up on the big one. We will come back on the echo. We'll talk to you about uh, the Sparkle route and the fact that uh, the Municipal Assembly has set up a committee to look at what happened there at St. Paul's Senior High School. Stay there. That's it for the big one. Right, so you welcome back. Uh, this is uh, News at 10, and rest we'll be talking about the internet and your credit. But let's do this quickly from the voter region because the Ketu South Municipal Assembly has set up a seven member committee, and that committee is to investigate the route at St. Paul's Senior High School in that part of the region. We're told that that resulted in the death of one of the students uh, who was hit by a stray bullet. The committee has up to Thursday to present its findings or its report. 
Now, the police have also arrested three of its officers who were told have been interdicted. Uh, those officers were involved in the shooting incident at St. Paul Senior High School in the Volta region. And very soon, we'll be speaking to the uh, Municipal Chief Executive, Pascal Lamte. He's just joined me on phone. Pascal, grateful to have you tonight. But uh, this committee, uh, what particularly, what are we finding out? Thank you very, thank you, and thank you to your cherished listeners. Now, the committee is a seven-member committee mm. uh, set up by the school authorities and the municipal security committee right. to look into the causes of last Friday's uh, uh, disturbances at St. Paul Senior High School. Mm. Now, uh, when you look at the terms of reference, they are supposed to, you know, look at student-teacher relationship and how that might have resulted in last week Friday's riots. And then also to look to look at the truth, you know, behind the serious allegation, you know, being made against some senior members of staff mm. that uh, you know, offenses like wearing of bathroom slippers to dining hall and other things are punished by the senior husband staff and other teachers. But then when allegations like students, you know, engaging in homosexual acts are reported to them, they seem not to care or not to do anything about it. These are some of the allegations that the students have made, which resulted in last week Friday's uh, uh, riots. Mm. And also, they are to look at why some particular teachers have become targets for the students during last week's uh, riots at the St. Paul's in High School. Mm. And also, they are to look at the security and lighting system in the school. And also, they are to advise on the security of teachers uh, as far as last week Friday's uh, riots is concerned. Mm -mm. And also to advise us when the few students should come back to school. Right. And, and lastly, they are also to look at the value of the items destroyed by the school during last Friday's rounds. Mm. And they have up to Thursday to present its report. And then after that, uh, perhaps, uh, the, the, uh, what will be done to the report implementation? Thank you very much. When the, 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 the committee presents its finding to the school authorities, that will be discussed by the education directorate at the municipal uh, level, the municipal security committee, and the, the board of directors of the school. We will look at that. We have a stakeholders meeting where we will invite the parents. After that meeting, we will now decide on what action to take as far as their findings uh, is concerned. That is what we intend doing. Grateful to have you tonight. Pascal Lamte is the municipal chief executive of the. Uh, K2 North uh, Municipal Assembly uh, talking to me about uh, the route at St. Paul's Senior High School. Now, let's stay on the echo because we're dealing with uh, internet safety. The United Nations and its partners are celebrating Safer Internet Day today with a special focus on education strategies to promote greater online safety for children and young people. We're told that uh, Safer Internet Day is an example of how the international community can collaborate in a harmonized way to create that kind of environment, a better environment for uh, children. And uh, we're told also that uh, it's on the theme creating a better e internet uh, facility together. That's the theme for the uh, celebration. Uh, ITU is championing the work of its Child Online Protection Initiative, which offers a comprehensive set of guidelines for children, parents, teachers, policymakers, and members of the uh, technical or the tech industry. We we'll actually be speaking to uh, officials uh, as far as the Safe Internet Day it's concerned. That's the focus we'll be talking about tonight, right here on the Echo. And my guests will very soon be seated and we'll begin to look at how your child out there can be prevented from getting contact, content, sorry, that's dangerous to his or her development. Grateful for you staying there. And let me speak to my guest tonight and uh, to my uh, left, uh, Awo Adam Amenya is uh, an executive director of J Initiative, and then to my extreme left there is Maximum Ametogo. Uh, he's uh, a technology activist. They have me studio. Welcome. Thank you. We are, we are, we're celebrating uh, Safer Internet today. Yeah. 
Okay, so let me begin from Maxima because you are a, a technology activist. Yes. So the internet isn't that good for all of us? The internet is neutral. Mm. So it's the users that give the internet its nature. Just like the knife. You can use the knife to cut your tomatoes in the kitchen. Mm. Or you can use the knife to kill somebody, which is against the law. Right. So the internet is neutral. It's people who use it to perpetrate crime make it evil. So, talking about kids or even adults, what is the danger here? Is it the, the system itself, the internet that, that is dangerous? No, you see, every system is, depends on how you use it. There are laws governing every platform, every system, mm. and even your extent of access to a particular information. Now, if you breach that, it becomes criminal. It becomes a law issue, a legal issue, sorry, to do. If, if you are not supposed to visit some websites, okay. for example, okay? So, so, so Maximum, then you're talking about the content. Yes, content. That is where the danger is. Yes. Right. So, go ahead and Basically, explain that one. Every us. online pla uh, solution or software is supposed to look at four things. Communication commerce content and uh, yeah communication content commerce and community building right. that's where the social networks comes in now each of these content or uh, platforms whatever they do they have age sensitive uh, accessibility uh, access to them okay right. so for example if you are visiting an alcoholic beverage website they will ask you if you are 18 years, so you fill a form before you submit, and then they will open, give, give you access to the alcoholic page mm. or content. So it means that that particular content is not for people below a certain age, just like the way they advertise it. Mm. Now, adults are not restricted to visit such sites, okay? But the thing is that if you start visiting those sites, and even adult content websites, and you have the same, you are sharing the same computer with your children at home. Now, browsers have the intelligence to know which sites you visit. So they are smart enough to even suggest the sites for you when you are coming to key in some content onto the address bar. So after you viewed your adult content website, mm. and then your child comes looking for a particular content, and then there's a drop down. Okay, uh, there's and the adult content to, pops up. Yes, yeah, so the address comes, it clicks on it, takes them there. Now you are moving children to that particular plot. And that is dangerous. That is very so dangerous. So you are su suggesting that uh, there are no regulations, direct regulations that can stop kids from accessing some of these things? No, for, for, for internet, you need to self-regulate. Okay, okay. I'll come back for us yeah. to deal with this issue of self-regulation. But let me yeah. speak to I will, uh, 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 I that because you are the you are the executive director of J Initiative. It means you deal a lot with kids. Now, how are they prone to this danger we are talking about? Yeah, right. Like uh, Maximus rightly said, mm. um, we you cannot. There's nothing to regulate the internet with. So the local policing is key. We have to and do it ourselves. Yes, we need to do it ourselves. So for us in J Initiative, we've seen situations where children come across the adult contents, and some of them don't know how they could handle it. So they're overtaken by events. Some curiosity make them go further, mm. further, and then they become so sexualized in the end. So what we try doing is to get the children informed about some of those dangers, Give them the positive side of the internet as well. To be sure that they are empowered enough to be able to activate simple features that will come right. that will be harmful to them. So it's about making choices on their own. Parents cannot follow them every day. They go to secondary school, they are on their own. They visit the cyber cafes and all of that. But if you are able to instill that discipline in your child, mm. that, okay, this time, this and this is harmful to you. This and this is good for you. The child will be able to make that. So, so it's, it's a matter of convincing the child that this isn't good. Building the child. We, we cannot use the, the, the system that, that is 
neutral as Maximus said to to protect our kids. It's, it's not likely we could do that. There's <laughs> nothing we could do. Martinus because was, we are in he, Ghana. But Martinus was talking about the fact that there are the ways we can deal with it. We can do with it locally. I That's the local policing he was talking about. No, I use the, the local policing using the internet facility or uh, you and me stopping the kids from getting access. The, the child stopping getting access himself. That's it. Yes. So that is empowerment. And that is what Jane Initiative deals in. Yes, that's what we, we do. That's what you do. So you have come across kids who have, uh, as a result of getting access, uh, uh, have become truants. It's not even becoming truant. They become highly sexualized. So you do you remember the, the song when it came? Uh, this, there's this particular song. Mm. And at one of oh, the yeah. sessions, a boy came in confidence to say that hmm, what you are saying is true because when I'm walking and I'm not hearing the song too, I still continue to dance. To dance to Tonga? Yes. <laughs> and some, sometimes it kind of urges them to do things that they, don't, they wouldn't have done in their normal selves. So it's, it's a way of telling them that okay you have the control, mm. you can check yourself. You can do that with or without that mommy or daddy. They are doing ICT. They learn ICT in school. Mm. They go to the cyber cafe. You are on your Facebook page and then something pops up. And it's a woman in a bikini. You want to see that. So you are viewing it. We've come across young people who have downloaded... Some of these uh, porn... Uh, yes, they, they, are, are they have folders on their pen drives. Caucasian breasts, African breasts, and all of that. And a child who is able to create folders for those things, you know that the child is a genius. Mm. But just that their energy is being channeled towards the wrong things. So what do we do? We give them the alternatives. Use the skills you have to create simple blog, to do something meaningful. Very which useful be, and, and, which and will meaningful. Which helpful to you in future. So that's the kind of thing we do. So mm. you see that most of them we go with things like this. These are uh, think before you click. Yes. Okay, so what if the cameras can capture? So these are some of the things that the kids are supposed to uh, look at. Uh, think before you, you click. Yes, and then you don't just go have, clicking. Uh, um, don't share your password and change it regularly. Okay, so these are supposed to help kids to regulate what they can access. It's, it's a kind of reminder. Okay, I'm the camera so is not taking it. Okay. Mm. So this one, don't think you're so nice because everyone no. hates you. And the other side has children and young people can fall victim to 